Welcome to Sim UK. Today I'm going to tell you absolutely everything that you want and need to know in order to get started in fishing Barrent Sea. And make sure that you watch to the end as I will include all the tips and tricks that I have learnt in over 30 hours of gameplay. So, you may well be wondering why this is called the Ultimate Quick Start Guide Tutorial Version 1, and not just the Ultimate Quick Start Tutorial. Well, I'll tell you. It's because in the weeks leading up to release, MISC allowed a select number of YouTubers like me to beta test the game, identify bugs, and suggest improvements to the game. As a result of this, a huge number of ideas were generated, and some have even made it into the game for release day. But there were so many that the majority of those accepted ideas will be realised in the coming weeks and months after release. In addition to this, game tweaks are likely to continue arriving by way of patches and DLC. If you're interested in crab fishing, then DLC number one is exactly that. Needless to say, it's going to add an entirely new arm to your fishing bow. Oh, I think that says bow. Moving on, the quick start guy. This is your starting boat, inherited from your grandfather. It's old, it's slow, and it's a bit rickety. It reminds you of your grandfather. This little wooden boat is your starting point with the epic Hermes Deep Sea Trawler, your current epic goal. To get there, you will need to work smart, invest wisely, and overcome all that the weather and sea can throw at you. To start, you have two 250 long lines. You can buy a maximum of four, and you can also buy long lines with 500 hooks, but your little boat will struggle to cope with a 500 line at first. Much later on, you can use nets, but that is much, much later on. Each long line is capable of catching 250 to 500 fish, but unlikely to do so, as fishing is just not that easy. And it also depends on your skill, as I will explain in a bit. For now, until you rank up, I recommend sticking to just the two lines. You will need to bait each of your lines at port, first by checking the current seasonal recommendations in your logbook, and secondly by going to the fishery, identifying your chosen fish and selecting the appropriate bait to catch your said fish. I recommend you try and catch the haddock to start. Next up, you can use the map to identify hotspots for your fish. This is one area that might very well change after release, requiring you to find your own hotspots and marking them on your GPS. For now though, pick one or two spots close to port and set your waypoints. Waypoints must circumnavigate landmass. This includes getting out of the port. Once you have waypoints, you can navigate using the top compass, which shows a red flag, the bottom mini map, which can be zoomed in or out, or you can fast travel. Fast travel, however, does not accumulate kilometres sailed, which is essential if you want to unlock the bigger and better boats. As such, fast travel is not recommended too often. Once you have chosen a hotspot, try and drop your first line right in the greenest part. Make sure that you are not travelling too fast, 4-5 to five knots is recommended. At the moment, this won't break your line or damage it, but it is a change that is potentially coming. Each long line needs to be at least 100 metres apart and left for a minimum of four hours, indicated by a red outline. With 20 hours being the approximately best time to collect, again indicated with a blue line and it's green just prior to that, thank you for that little nugget of information, FYI. Anything left for more than 32 hours will be lost forever, and this is indicated as a red line. Following the same advice, go and set your second line. If you put both lines close together, only one of the two lines will be effective, so it is best to spread them out a bit. In addition to this, timing is essential to effective fishing in FPS. Your little boat can simply not hold two full catches at once, and your speed and your handling is considerably affected by carrying a full load. So think ahead, or you could struggle to get your next line in, in time. Pulling in the long lines is simple enough. Position the starboard side of your boat, that's the right hand side, so that the first buoy of the long line is close enough to reach, indicated by the green arc, 
and the second buoy is relatively straight from that point too, as indicated by green arrow. Press the appropriate key, which is defaulted to E, to haul in the line and have your mouse close at hand. As each of the fish becomes visible, you will have to time your left mouse click to get the closing circle as small as possible. Each colour denotes a quality of catch, with red being a total miss. Try not to do that. Once you have your catch on board, you have the option to gut the fish. Fish that have been gutted well will earn more money than fish which have not been gutted at all. Badly gutted fish will earn you less, and gutting the fish is a very, very tricky business. The large coloured bubbles either side of the fish act like magnets, pulling your knife this way and that. Trying to maintain a straight cut along the dotted line is at best tricky. Later down the line you can employ crew who will do this job for you much better than you can, but for now, good luck is all I can say. Whether you choose to gut the fish or not, you will add weight to your boat and take up some of your onboard storage space. This can be upgraded, but it is expensive, and without upgrading your engine first, could very, very well leave you dead in the water, should some even very small swells suddenly catch you out. Should this happen, your best bet is to try and ride the waves back to port, and fingers crossed that the tide is coming in and not going out. I'm joking, I don't think this is actually implemented yet, but maybe one day. To sell your catch, head back to the port and follow the on-screen instructions. Your logbook will track all of your sales, catches, history, seasonal advice and much, much more. Also, located just below the logbook is the in-game wiki. Information here is pretty important, so do take a look. In addition to selling your fish, this is where you can upgrade, repair and even purchase a new boat. To purchase the next boat up, the Sharkin, I may have mispronounced that, but I think it's a cool name regardless, you will need to travel 40 kilometers in order to obtain the junior certificate. Kilometers are not accumulated when using fast travel. The Sharkin is a big step up in many ways and unlocks net fishing. It will cost you 450,000 kroner, so it could take you a little while to achieve. To help speed things up, you can always go and visit your friendly bank manager, who will happily extend you a loan. Your new, bigger, better, faster boat is actually a perfectly adequate fisher, vastly superior to your starting boat and will enable you to venture further and reap bigger rewards. It also unlocks your first crew member and net fishing. Bigger boats cost money and should they get so badly damaged they sink, you might have wished that you took out insurance, so do consider this early on. In the town of the port, you can occasionally find crew looking for work. Each crew member has their own specific set of attributes and a green line below their bio which indicates their stamina. Crew can increase their stamina by working, resting and eating. Working also enables their skill levels to increase and makes them process jobs more efficiently. Crew are paid an initial signing on fee and also take a percentage of the total earnings for the ship. So factor these things in when picking your crew. With a crew member, your fish gutting days can finally be over, although they are considerably slower than you at processing fish. Your crew member's ability to gut fish can have a big impact on your profits, so choose wisely. To set a net requires just you and is very similar to long lining. Pick your spot, drop the line in and keep your speed between 4 to 5 knots. Then a horizontal bar will appear on the screen and your only job now is to keep moving forwards whilst keeping the vertical bar within the boundaries of the horizontal one. Easy in calm weather, more demanding in a choppy sea. Similar to that of long lining, hauling in the net requires you to pull alongside the net and with your crew member on the haul net station and you on deck, just hit the E key and the haul will begin. To process the haul you will be required to play another mini game. This time you need to press the WASD keys as requested. It is super easy, but any mistake will cause damage to your net and if you miss too many times it will render the net useless and the haul will be lost. Unlocking more ports affords you more crew to choose from and it can also unlock jobs and challenges. These are completely optional but can be a good source of income and incentivize you to rank up on your licensing a bit sooner. Jobs boost your reputation and this in turn increases your profits and reduces your expenses. As you complete jobs you will find more complex jobs available with bigger payouts and even a secret sixth boat. Shh. 
When carrying a job load, you will not be able to fast travel, and at the moment, you cannot take multiple jobs at the same time. Again, I have requested that this be re-evaluated, as it is an unnecessary and unrealistic imposition. Some ports have more facilities than others, with Hammerfest being the main source for upgrades and ship purchasing. To unlock a port, you will have to sail to them, again, without the assistance of fast travel. The majority of the ocean available to you at the start is covered by a fog of war, and you will need to sail through it in order to uncover it. To speed this up a bit, I highly recommend upgrading your radar. It is relatively inexpensive and makes things a lot easier. Just one thing to reiterate really is the in-game wiki and the logbook. Both of these are invaluable to an extent. The wiki, which is constantly being updated, will give you some high-level information about many aspects of the game. This is due to be updated over time and even exported out to an official wiki page at some stage. There are some in-game tutorials too, which thankfully are also being improved and expanded, so in time these will also serve as a great source of practice and information too. The logbook is one of my favourite aspects of the entire game. It will track seasons, jobs, equipment, sales and hopefully one day, if my prayers are answered, finances. I have requested it and I would expect to see that at some stage because it's such an important aspect of the game that just appears to be missing at this stage. Now, as promised, my final thing here is just some tips and tricks that I've picked up over my last 30 hours of gameplay. Crew are not needed for every circumstance. When setting nets or long lines, get your crew member to cook up some food. Then, should they get tired at any point, you can quickly get them back to operational status by chucking them a burger. Crew process fish much slower than you can, so consider combining the ability to rest in port, so whilst you skip time or sleep, the crew still processes the fish, and then gutting any remaining fish yourself. This can ensure you maximise your profits whilst not losing a net or a line because you've been waiting too long for fish to be processed. Split your lines, so don't set two lines at the same time. Your boat simply cannot hold enough fish to make this work. Instead, separate their starting soak times to allow yourself time to haul, process and sell before needing to haul in the next line. When you are collecting a line, take a spare one to set. Then set the new line before hauling the existing line in, as your boat speed and handling will be dramatically reduced once you have a full load on board. Again. I have asked for this to be looked at and possibly changed. Check the weather. At midnight, things can get dramatically different. If you're in one of the smaller boats, this could cause you significant problems or a heck of a lot of fun. Either way, make sure you know what you're heading into. When choosing where to set your nets, remember that when your boat is laden with fish, it will move much slower than when empty. This will considerably increase the time it takes to get from port to your waypoint and could cause you to lose other gear. Loans! Loans are easy to pay off at the moment, so take the opportunity to improve your equipment and even your boat as soon as possible. Upgrading your engine might seem like a low down priority at first, but trust me when I say that that mill pond you're enjoying can get pretty nasty pretty fast. Make sure you have enough HP on board to continue your journey no matter what happens. Repair your boat. Crew members are actually able to repair damage to your boat. In time, I hope that this will also include the ability to repair nets, but at the moment, this aspect is not available. It is almost advantageous to deliberately damage your boat when leaving the dock, just enough to allow your crew member to repair it. This will boost their ability to make repairs, and should you have an accident, they will then be able to fix it much faster. Know your fish and watch your quotas. This is quite self-explanatory. You can only catch so many fish each year, so make sure that you are targeting the right ones by choosing your bait carefully, picking the right hotspots, and using the right equipment to catch. So that's the end of my quick start tutorial version one, guys. I hope that this gets you hauling in no time. And let me know in the comments section if you think I have missed anything or if you have any questions. I hope to put together a version 2 and even some updated more complex tutorials just as soon as I can. For now though, that's it from me, so please feel free to slap that like button if this guide helps you, and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, take care of yourselves and goodbye for now.